Following on from problems 1991 on exponential families, we're now going to show that the gamma distribution belongs to the exponential family of distributions. The gamma distribution may be parameterized in one of two ways, this or this. We're going to use this. The gamma then has two parameters, the shape and the rate. And what we're asked to show is this gamma distribution with a fixed shape parameter show that it belongs to a one parameter natural exponential family. We're going to distinguish between the exponential family, one parameter exponential family and one parameter dispersion exponential family which we discussed briefly in 91. So this here, the probability mass or density function depending on whether your variable is discrete or continuous, has two parameters theta and phi. Drop the phi, so drop that phi, take this out, take that out as in video 91 at the beginning and then that will give us the one parameter natural exponential family. For people who are doing regression analysis, GLMs, they're more interested in considering adding an extra parameter, it's called the dispersion parameter, we're calling it phi here and then you've got this function a of phi and then you've got phi here and this function c and then some sources will differentiate that from the usual exponential family by calling it a dispersion exponential family to account for the fact that we have this extra parameter with a dispersion parameter. So I'm going to do it two ways. First let's just show that it belongs to one parameter natural exponential family and then show that it also belongs to one parameter natural dispersion exponential family. In passing it's natural because we've got this parameter in here how the random variable ties up with the parameter is that comes in multiplicatively it's not a function of theta and that is no, not a function of x it's just x by itself and that is a function of theta remember this terminology about the natural exponential family is not standard everywhere so some people just say so long as this is just a function of theta this could be a function of x they'll call that the natural exponential family right at the end we'll consider the case where we allow for both shape and the rate parameter to be unknown. Okay, so if we fix the shape parameter, so it's known, it's it's then it's not a, not 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 something to estimate. It's not a problem. So some places they'll call that a nuisance parameter. So only beta is unknown. What we want to do then is rewrite this PDF in this format. Well, I don't want to be writing x on every single line, exponent every line. So let's work with the log. So if we work with the log, just take the log of this guy, log of f is this. And then all we're going to do is we're going to match this to these things up here. So what we're looking for is some function of the variable. So I've just rearranged that. So take this over, the, write that first. So you can see that theta must be minus beta. Remember we set a theta to be 1 here because we're just going to consider it belonging to the natural exponential family. B here is a function of theta, which we know is my theta is minus beta. And then plus C then is a function of x. So if we match this up you can see that the B function is this or this. So let's just call it this. I've written it in purple. Note that the, there's a minus sign here. So since this is a plus, I need to put a minus out for and take the minus of all this. Okay, and I'm calling this C. Note that I said this could belong to C or it could belong to B. That's because alpha is considered known. It's basically not, you know, it's not. Um, it's basically a constant. So being constant, it could just be absorbed into b function or absorbed into the c function. Okay, so that shown it that the gamma belongs to the natural one parameter natural exponential family when the shape parameter is fixed. Now let's allow for the dispersion parameter. So now let's see that it fits into the one parameter natural dispersion exponential family. In GLM analysis they usually just drop the word dispersion because it's you know that's the only one they're going to work with, that's a natural exponential family they're going to work with, so they don't need to use the word dispersion. Okay, 
So, in this case, in GLM analysis, in regression analysis, they're interested in connecting this natural parameter, theta, to the mean of the random variable. And the mean of a gamma, written in this parameterization, is alpha over beta. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take these two terms here and pull out an alpha which I've done here in red. Then again by matching you can see this minus beta over alpha is theta but we've said like the mean of the random variable is alpha over beta so this is the same as saying minus 1 over mu. The function a of the dispersion parameter is 1 over phi and b which is the function of theta is minus log of beta and that's really what we're in the main bit we're interested in in regression analysis the c then will just be everything else it would be that and that okay well we can tidy up this even more because we don't like you know without the negative there by and this is the more common one so i put a star by it it's the third representation by sticking a minus pulling out a minus from both of these terms okay in which case you can see the theta now will be 1 over mu a is a function of dispersion parameter. Dispersion parameter is bigger than zero by definition, so this function here will be minus one over that dispersion parameter. And b is log beta. C is everything else. So you might be thinking, are there any other representations now that I've shown you three? Well, look at this bit here. Let's take this alpha and put it instead of collecting it under beta and calling that theta, take that under x. So in other words, I've got this now. Then this is not of the form above, so it's not of the form of, a, as we've discussed it, the natural exponential family, because here you've got a function of x. So here then theta is beta, and x t function t of x is x over alpha, which is not x. Okay, now we've done that, we might as well just uh, use this to find the mean variance so you understand the importance of the function b. We showed in problem 91 that the mean of the random variable is given by the first derivative of b. Remember, we call this b function a cumulant function. And we'll find the variance as well. Now, we can work with any of those represent these uh, forms above here. Let's work with 1. You can do the same thing for 2, 3, and whatever to, to show that you get the same values for mean and variance. So what I want is the b function. Well, b function, as I've written it, is this. Looking at it now, it's just easy just to have collected c, put that into c, then I don't have to write. Uh, it looks neater, but OK, I've done it that way. So what I want to do is take, so written it down here, that's b function. First derivative, I want to, first of all, re rewrite this in terms of theta, so b is minus b is minus theta because of that so I've rewritten it here this to here this here is just a constant because alpha is known so it's just a, I don't I have to think about it it's just like a value just a number so I'll just leave that as it is when I do the derivative with respect to theta using the chain rule on this guy I get this, obviously, that constant with respect to theta is zero. So I have this. I do not leave the answer like this because I'm after the mean of a gamma. The parameter for the gamma in our parameterization has parameters alpha and beta, not theta. So we, we express it theta in terms of beta. We know that theta is equal to minus beta. So then just substitute for theta. I get alpha over beta. That is the mean. Of x. The variance will just do the same thing. We'll show that this is the relationship with the b function for the variance of x. So take the first derivative of b in terms of theta, that's here, and do a derivative of that. Okay, and then you can see if following the same process is to get alpha over beta squared. Looking at this gamma, you see that the support is a non negative number and both parameters are constrained to be positive 
So looking at this, you can see the mean of x will be positive and the variance is positive. Okay, so again, just uh, some comments here. So the generalized linear models in regression analysis, they introduce this dispersion parameter phi. We could repeat the analysis, this time fixing beta with alpha unknown. And then in that case, we can show that it's still in the exponential family, but this time in the exponent, you have some function of our random variable. Like this, not of the form the parameter, canonical parameter times x by itself. So we're calling the uh, something that enters like this an exponent, the natural exponential family, and this uh, not an exponential family, I mean natural parameterization. But as I said, there's different terminology, so some people still call that it's still in the natural exponential family. How about the case where both the parameters are unknown? then we can show that this is not actually a one parameter exponential family it belongs to the two parameter exponential family and since the method is exactly basically the same I've just given you the answer let's look at this it's the definition of exponential family in general for k number of parameters you can see the only difference is up here and this is more general version of writing it we're not talking about exp natural exponential families here this is the common way of writing it so it's a linear combination of a function of each of these parameters times a function of the data that's how it's different in our case we set k to 1 for the one parameter and this was set to be the natural parameter so this a function was just the identity this b function was also identity and we call that the natural exponential family and the, here you can see the this case there's no dispersion parameter uh, because uh, remember dispersion parameters when we're doing generalized linear models and in that case they're interested in the dispersion parameter okay so what we have is we, we rewrite the gamma in the same form let's just keep it same form nice and easy then you could just see again by matching just rewrite it first and then matching that now I have two parameters this is being one this being the other I can call it alpha beta or I could call it alpha minus beta does it matter which minus goes with uh, this or goes with x finally I started off with this example by fixing the shape parameter because in regression analysis this is the way they kind of treat this gamma they'll fix they'll suppose it's known first of all and just estimate the regression coefficients supposing the alpha is known by MLE and then they will estimate this shape parameter which is basically the dispersion parameter by um, something like method of moments or they could also do it by MLE 